Welcome to our channel Elimika Mtandaoni. Uh, today we are finalizing our series of videos on research process and today we'll talk about uh, referencing and citation as we talked in the last episode while we were explaining about how you can report your research results uh, we, we mentioned we have what we call back matters in the back matters uh, the, that section consists of uh, references and some appendices uh, in there so in this video we'll talk about how you can write your references how you can cite your work and things like that so before speaking about uh, the referencing and citation let me talk about a very important thing that we call it plagiarism uh, plagiarism is an act whereby uh, you take someone else's work and you use it as if it were yours you without acknowledging the person whose work whom work you have taken so plagiarism is defined as presenting someone else's work as your own work. So you do this by uh, doing the following. If you copy or you cut and paste uh, from other sources without acknowledging the source, you are doing plagiarism. If you take exact thing from other source and you put quotes without acknowledging where you have got the source, then that is also plagiarism. If you paraphrase or you summarize, you read someone else's idea, then you present it on your own words, but the idea remains there, but it's not your idea. That is also a plagiarism. Or if you use images, you use tables, you use graphs from other people's work without uh, acknowledging that person, then we say you are plagiarizing. Um, or if you... Even if you go to the extent you use your own previous work, for example, you did a research and you reported it uh, or you published it in a certain journal, uh, then again, you come to do another research and you decide to take some pieces of words or some pieces of work from that other previous research of yours, you are also plagiarizing. Or if you are given an individual work and Instead of doing it as individual, you go and collaborate. That is also uh, plagiarism. So how should we avoid plagiarism? In order to avoid plagiarism, there are some tips that if you follow them, uh, you will avoid this kind of uh, plagiarism. Keep track of what you find from the beginning. So if you are doing a literature review and you found out you have three articles that will help you in your study, keep track of them. Record their full details of the sources that you might use. Make good quality notes, but do not copy. Put it in some summaries. Then be consistent. Plan anything in advance, but do that a little bit every day. But in order for you to be at the safe side, then you have to do citing. So what is citation? Citation uh, means you give a credit to individuals for their creative work, for their intellectual work that you have used in your study. So you use, let's say, uh, Mogosi had published uh, a certain research. Then you find out that uh, Mogosi's some pieces of Section, some sections in Mogosi's work will help you to build up in your own study. Then it is not forbidden for you to take someone else's work and use on your work. But what you should do, you have to give credit to Mogosi. You should say that uh, this piece of work, I uh, have taken it from Mogosi. So how do you do that? That is what we say uh, you are citing. It can be uh, used to locate a certain particular source. And in that way, you will combat plagiarism. Uh, typically, when you are doing citation, you include important things. The most important things that should be included while you are citing, first of all, author's last name. Author's last name is very important because somehow author's last name uh, is has a kind of uniqueness. Then another important thing is the date where that um, that work was published, the location of publishing company, uh, you put what we call journal article, and if there is any digital object identifier, uh, you put it. When do we cite and what do we cite? Uh, citing applies to all. Either you are presenting facts or you are presenting figures or ideas or theories, but they are not yours. 
they are someone else's. So it applies to all. If if you are presenting a certain fact, that fact you borrowed it from another source, or you are presenting a figure that is not yours, or the idea, or any theory, and, and those ideas, those facts, those theories, they may come from books, they may come from journals, from internet sources, websites, etc. Maybe you watched a certain video, or you looked at a certain lecture notes. Uh, exception is only with the common uh, knowledge. For example, the sun rises from, let's say, east to west, etc. Those are uh, common knowledge. So uh, you don't have to cite for common uh, knowledge. So where do you cite? You cite within or at the end of the text when you use uh, those ideas, if you refer to someone else's work. Uh, we have different methods of doing citation. Uh, the four common methods of referencing to a source of document they can be either you do a direct quotation from another source, a direct quotation. For example, you take the word as they appear from another source. Then you put a quote followed by a citation. Or you can paraphrase. Or you can cite the whole document. You can cite the whole document. In academic writing, most of your essays or assignments should be a phrased on your own words. Do not uh, do direct quotation or cite the whole document, but what you should do, you read uh, and understand whatever uh, task you have given by your instructor. For example, you are given an assignment and you find uh, there is a source somewhere. So what you should do, you go and read the source. After you have understood the source, you come and write on your own words, but you should acknowledge the source where you have taken uh, those material. Now let's just talk, let's just... Uh, pass through these uh, different methods, one after another. Let's start with the quotation. Uh, as you are doing quotation, quotation must be identical to the original work. You take each and everything as it is written. But what you do, as you put it on your own work, you must put quotes. And quotes uh, must match the source document word for word and must be attributed to the original author. For example, uh, the original source said A, B, C, and you take that A, B, C, you put it on your work, then you should put quotation. But as you are doing that, you must consider the number of words that uh, are allowed to do quotation. If you use, uh, you, 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 you directly uh, take word for word of less than 40 words, Quotation should be incorporated into the text of your essay or of your assignment or it should be enclosed and it should be enclosed within the marks. And you should use a single quotation mark to indicate previously quoted materials within your quotation. But if you have more than 40 words, 40 or more words, then a quotation should be indented as a block of text and the quotation marks. I could explain this. Let's let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about quotation. Let me give you an example. For example, uh, this is the piece of work that you are writing, and when it comes to the point that you do a direct quotation for more than forty words, uh, you shouldn't start from here. You should indent. You should enter inside here, and you put some quotes. You put your uh, your words that you have taken. Then uh, you add some quotation. So uh, that is how we do with the uh, quotation of work which consists of more than 40 words. Another method of citing is when you are paraphrasing. Speaking of paraphrasing is uh, that act of you go and read someone else's work, you understand that work. After you have understood that work, then you come and write it on your own words. So you come and write it uh, in your own words, but you should acknowledge where you have taken uh, the idea. So paraphrasing and summarizing, they both involve putting information from the source materials into your own words. And uh, the, purpose, the purpose of paraphrasing is to express the ideas of others on your own words. So you are doing, a, you are phrasing. When paraphrasing, you must decide the original source. You must cite the original source. Summarizing also involves putting the main ideas into your own words, uh, including the main points. 
then uh, these summaries are significantly shorter than the original work and they take a broad view of the source materials so that is another method uh, while you are doing citation sometimes it may be necessary to give general reference to the whole of the source document this method uh, of reference is used uh, at least often for example you have an example Stan explores the basics of cognitive uh, psychology through its so you are you are just summarizing it's a kind of talking of the whole document that you have read the whole document that you have read then you summarize it in simple paragraph you explain the main idea that you have captured it from that other source like we see here in a, an example uh, this uh, says Stenberg 2006 explores the basic of cognitive psychology through its coverage of cognitive neuroscience so you see he he explains the document that he has read in full but that explanation is summarized into a short one paragraph so that is what we say citing the whole uh, the whole uh, document we have different citation styles that we should use uh, when you're talking about citation style these citation styles they detect the information that is necessary uh, to be seen while you are doing a citation and and how they should be ordered as well as uh, the punctuation and other kinds of formatting so there are different ways where you can cite resources from uh, your research but the most common are for example american psychology association style uh, modern language association style and chicago or turabian style if you are doing uh, let's say uh, educational studies or psychology studies or sciences or even uh, different assignments at your school then you should adopt the american psychology association style uh, if your studies uh, focus on humanities issues about humanities then you go for modern language association uh, if you are dealing with things let's say uh, business history and finance then the best or the better citation style is Chicago or Turabian. We have other styles like Harvard style, IEEE, ISO, OSCOLA, and so many other styles. But let's see uh, in short about upper style and a little bit about IEEE style. Starting with an upper style, this style consists of rules and guidelines that the publisher observes to ensure clear and consistent presentation of uh, written materials how do you uh, present an upper an upper style how do you present an upper style uh, uh, we present an uh, upper style uh, using uh, let's say uh, author's last name uh, we present using author's last name author's last name Let's talk about this. For example, you are presenting upper style. We use uh, author's last name. For example, this is Mogosi. Mogosi, followed by date of publication. Let's say if Mbiri, Kuminatano, then you put uh, brackets. This is how uh, we do uh, the upper style presentation. But we have other styles like IEEE style. This is the Institute for Electrical Engineer Engineering. Uh, in electronics engineers it is a professional organization support many branches of engineering computer science and information technology so if you are doing study that fall under these engineering studies computer science studies and information technology studies then you use uh, IEEE uh, style and when you are doing an in-text citation you use a uh, numbered uh, square brackets so you use numbered uh, square brackets for example uh, you find a square brackets like this and inside there you find a number the number he inside here presents uh the the the, the uh the source in the reference list because after you have done your citation then whatever you have cited will appear in details in the uh, reference list so that is what uh, we do with the uh, IEEE styles. Now let's see different examples of how we can write a citation using upper style. This is very important. If you have uh, authors with the same name, for example, you are presenting 
um, you, are, you are citing a, a study where you have authors with the same name. If author's surname is incorporated in the text place, the initials before the surname uh, should appear. For example, we have Lassen, A-E and M-K, Lassen. So, uh, if you are presenting this study, then you should, you, you, the study, and you say that uh, you have two or more authors, but they have the same surname, then you should include their initials. But if you have multiple works by the same author, for example, the same author uh, in the same year published three researches, published three researches, then uh, you have to find if the first research, let's say, by Msele, research by Msele, uh, then you should say 2007, you put the word A to represent the first, uh, the first research. If in the same year, 2007, Msele published another study, you should say Msele 2007, this is called B. That means uh, you are presenting researches from different uh, authors. But if you are presenting a corporate author, this works without a personal author. The name of the organization should be given uh, a full meaning. If you have more than one work cited, for example, you have studied a certain concept from paper one, you have studied the same concept in paper two, paper three, and paper four, then uh, the list of all sources of information, either in the text or within the citation, should be separated by a, semi, a semicolon. It should be separated by uh, by a semicolon. For example, uh, you read a certain idea by Mogosi, then uh, you say, uh, this is Mogosi, Mogosi, let's say 2015, 2016, you put a semicolon, then you put another author. Let's say this is uh, Mkinga, Mkinga again, uh, 2000 and what? 2007. So if you have two or more authors, then uh, you cite your work, uh, by separating the authors with the, a semicolon. If there is no author, you have read a certain article and there is no author. When work has no author or the author is anonymous, then you cite that text uh, with the first few words of the reference list. For example, uh, you give a title, then you put the year where it was published. If there is no date, if there is no date of publication, then you use the abbreviation N. D. ND stands for no date. But if you are doing, you are presenting work for uh, newspapers, what you should do, you should put the name of that newspaper plus the date it was published plus the page number. For example, a uh, daily news eh, of 24th August 1997, comma, then you say page, let's say page 6 or page, eh, which page? That is... Um, how about referencing? What is referencing? After you have cited your work, then those uh, sources that you have cited are put at the back of your paper in a certain list. That list, we call it a reference list. Uh, and referencing is different from bibliograph. Bibliograph includes sources that you have read but you have not directly uh, cited in your or you have not directly uh, written in your in your text. So referencing is just creating a list of sources that you have cited. And the difference between referencing and bibliography is seen that referencing list contains details of all sources cited in a text. A reference list is arranged alphabetically by author. If an item has no author, it is cited by its title and it is included in the alphabetical list using the first significant word of the title. So you should learn how you can write uh, different uh, references. And a reference list is generally placed at the end of the work. Commas are used to separate each item of the reference or uh, the citation. If you have more than one item with the same author, List the items chronologically. You start with the earliest publication, you end with the, the, the current publi publication. But bibliograph, this includes all sources that have been consulted for background reading, even if they are not cited in the document. The same method of presentation is used for both 
reference list and a bibliograph. Now let's see how to write a create reference list using upper style. If you are you are you are listing a book that is written with one author, then you write the name of that author followed by the year, then you put full stop, followed by the title of that work, then you put dot, followed by location, then full colon, followed by the publisher. For example, we have Shorton M.A., 1989, the book is Computer Addiction, a study of computer descents from London, and the publisher are Taylor's and Francis. That is if you are uh, referencing a, a book, a book. If you are referencing a book that is written by two authors, you start by the first author, you put an ampersand to represent that he, that is an end, and another author, then you put the year, year followed by the title of the book, location, and he publish. As you can see there, Rosaline G and Warden M, 2010, the book title is, of course, You Are Angry, Guide to Dealing with the Emotions of Subsistence Abuse. Then the location is Center City and publisher is Hazel Den. If you are, you are given journal article with one author, then you put the surname of the author, comma, followed by initials of the uh, first and middle name, followed by the year, followed by the title of the article, the title of the article, the, the title of the journal, then the volume number, issue number, then page numbers. For example, you have Light M and Light U Apple, the geographic expansion of Mexican immigration in the United States and the simplification. Then uh, the journal is Law Enforcement Review Executive Forum Journal and volume number 8, issue 1, and page numbers 73 to 82. Then if you have an online journal with one author, the same. You put your author's last name plus their initials plus the year and the title of the article, the title of the journal, the volume number, page number, plus uh, the URL of that journal homepage. If you are doing again online with the two or seven to seven authors, you put the list of all authors at the, as it is seen there, uh, followed by the year of publication, the title of the article, the title of the journal, the volume number, page numbers, and URL of the journal home page. Thank you very much. Now we are ending our uh, research process series of videos. We will look about the reference management tools. As you are doing reference, there are some tools that can help you to do the referencing and citation. But it is very important for you to understand those rules. For example, I have talked here how you can create your reference list. You have to know if you are given, let's say, a journal article with one author, how do you write a reference list? You should know these rules. They are very important. When it comes to writing references with your own hand, then you should do. You should be able to write references in a proper way. But you can also use uh, reference management tools. We have tools such as Mendeley. We have tools like RefMe. We have EndNote. We have some tools that are embedded in some uh, software programs like Microsoft Word in this tab that is called the uh, references where you'll find a lot of tools but mind you it is very important for you to know how you can write references how you can write citations with your own hand it's very important so uh, thank you very much you have been with me uh, through a series of videos on the research process and this is the last episode thank you very much uh, don't forget to subscribe follow up it is very, it is a nice uh, platform. You will get education about a lot of uh, education, uh, starting with the uh, technological education, uh, business education, etc.